Let's begin with the prayer of the Holy Spirit. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Veni Sancti Spiritus repletuorum corda fidelium et tui amoris in eis in imacende. Emite Spiritum tuum et creabuntur. Oremus Deus qui corda fidelium Sancti Spiritus illustratione da cuisti. Da nobis in iodem spirito recta sapere, ed eius semper consolazione gaudere per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Amen. Today is the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. Okay, February 11, 2021. That's a very nice day to uh, commemorate the uh, apparition of Our Lady to that 14-year-old girl in uh lord's friends and who was that 14 year old girl who is of course now a saint bernadette yes yeah, chevelle bernadette subaru right she was a young a young 14 year old girl who uh saw our lady in that grotto okay? um, it is a very typical depiction of the apparition of our lady of lords uh, in a grotto, in a practically a, 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 a hole in a in a, um, a side of a the side of a rock, okay. and um, and our lady uh, there uh, in a series of apparitions identified herself as the Immaculate Conception. So that was the. Um, that was the uh, revelation of Our Lady. So this apparition happened in 1858. 1858 in Lourdes, France. And of course, uh, we all know that uh, the shrine of Our Lady of Lourdes is a miraculous uh, shrine. And there are plenty, 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 plenty of cures that have been uh, granted by Our Lord through the intercession of Our Lady for those people who went there um you know on a pilgrimage um how's that joe yeah yeah the water that uh, is flowing from uh, uh the the rock there that uh, our lady instructed uh, bernadette subaru to dig so she she dug up a little hole and uh from there sprung this very um uh, miraculous kind of water okay so it's a very nice devotion for all of us to have to remember our lady um, uh, of lourdes and ask her for uh, many many of our concerns physical ailments that we that we have um, you know ask our lady's intercession for those okay so today we're going to comment on the gospel of saint mark we're continuing uh, our reading on saint mark uh, chapter 7, verses 24 to 30. So this is a very appropriate kind of uh, uh, of gospel reading, especially uh, on, on today's feast, okay? uh, because it speaks to us about prayer, okay? about prayer. Jesus went to the district of Tyre. He entered a house and wanted no one to know about it, but he could not escape notice. <laughs> How... How uh, how nice of Saint Mark to make a very um, good observation as far as our Lord's desire to go unnoticed where he was going. You know, he was going to visit. He was visiting a town, but he didn't want people to notice him. He wanted to keep it quiet as much as possible. We don't know why, but it's a very interesting. Uh, a detail that St. Mark, um, you know, uh, says in his gospel. But soon a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. She came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth. And she begged him to drive the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first. So that's how our Lord responded to her. Let the children be fed first. Who are the children that our Lord is referring to? Hmm? Remember, 
St. Mark says this woman is Greek, a Syrophoenician. So she is not a, a Jew, right? And our Lord, our Lord said himself that he came primarily, primarily for the Jewish people. Okay. Uh, so our Lord is trying to emphasize that and said, let the children be fed first. And the children here he's referring to are the chosen people, the Jews. For it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. Wow. It's not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. Our Lord sounded a little condescending here, don't you think? For he was practically comparing this Syrophoenician woman to a dog. At least that's how it appears on its face value, right? She said to him, Okay. The woman replied to our Lord and said, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's scraps. Clever answer. And that's her way of saying that, you know, Lord, just give me something, even if it's just the scraps, just like the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of the children. And he said to her, for saying this, you may go. The demon has gone out of your daughter. When the woman went home, she found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. Very nice story. Of course, people may interpret this in many different ways, particularly in the very condescending tone that our Lord uh, uh, dealt with this woman uh, with but um, I'd like us to understand this in a different context and that is that precisely um, our Lord was testing this woman was testing her faith he was testing how much this woman trusted or co could put her trust in our Lord okay and whether this woman is going to insist and persist in her prayer, begging our Lord that he cures her daughter. So this is a great lesson for us on prayer. Uh, you know, prayer is 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 uh, is a many a many dimensional uh, form of communicating with God. But one of the things that it is is it's an expression of our trust. It's an expression of our faith it's an expression that we depend on god for everything okay? for everything and we cannot pretend to be so self-sufficient that we have no need of god at all okay no we need god for everything we need god for our very existence we need god for our very life okay and we need god for the sustenance of that life both on the physical dimension of our lives and the spiritual dimension of our lives. We need God for everything. Okay? And just like what this woman teaches us, praying unceasingly, praying perseveringly is important. Both as an expression of that trust in God and as an expression of our dependence on God. Okay? We have to pray unceasingly, without stopping, until God responds to our prayers. And I want to make you understand, God always responds to our prayers. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says maybe. Sometimes he says not now. But there is always a response. Now it is up to us to be sensitive enough to what God is responding to our prayers for. Okay? We need to be sensitive and listen to what God wants to communicate to us when we pray. 
So the important thing is that we don't stop praying until we get a clear response from our Lord. Now, when is that clear response going to come? Well, we never know. Sometimes it can come right away. Sometimes it can come much later. Sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no. But there will always be a response. So let's be patient to wait for the response. And let's learn to listen for the response. How does God respond to our prayers? Well, in many ways. Sometimes it's a direct grant of what we ask for. right? But sometimes... Or rather, I'd like to say, more often than not, God responds to our prayers by arranging the circumstances of our lives in such a way that we discern from them the response that God is giving to us. And since that is the case, then that response will need discernment. That response will need discovery. That response will need an understanding of the meanings of the things that happen in our lives. That's how God communicates with us. That's how God responds to us. Because He wants us to continue trying to discern that response. Because that is his way of pulling us closer to him more and more and more. He wants us to keep communicating with him. Not only when we need something, but moreover, when we are trying to discern what it is that he is responding to. And how he is responding to our prayers. So that is why we need to keep praying continuously, continuously praying. Sometimes for the same thing that we have already been asking for for years. Because sometimes the answer doesn't come quickly. But I could guarantee you, based on my experience, and, and, and based on what the saints tell us, that God always responds. We just have to wait for it. And we have to keep praying for it. And we have to keep trying to discern the response of God. What's important is we don't give up. We keep on praying, 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 and praying. And you know what? When we keep up this attitude of prayer, it shows not only our dependence on God, our trust on God, our reliance on His on His providence, on His compassion, on His mercy, on His love, on on everything that we know God is, but it's also an expression of our humility. Only a humble person will beg God in prayer for the things that he or she needs. So in humility, let us always pray for the things that we need. And this can be small or big, it doesn't matter. What's important is that we have the attitude of always asking, of always praying, of always thanking God, of always adoring God, which are the four aspects of prayer, right? You know that from your catechism. Of course, in this, the context of this gospel, we're talking about begging God for favors, asking, petitioning. This is the prayer of petition, asking God for things. And we never, never stop. Uh, Now, sometimes God says no to our prayers. What do we do? Do we sulk? Do we all of a sudden turn our back to God and say, Ah, you're a bad God. You don't answer my prayer favorably. You don't grant me what I'm asking for. Does Papa give you everything you ask for? No. (laughs) And why is that? Because Papa and Mommy know best what's good for you. And sometimes what you ask for is not good for you. See? And Papa and Mommy are the image of God. 
God also knows best. Knows better than Papa and Mommy. God knows best. Sometimes what we ask for from God, He has a different idea. He has something better in store for you. So He says no to your request. But you know what? Again, from my own experience, every time God says no to your request, to our prayer, He always comes back. The popular term nowadays is he circles back. Right? He always circles back to us with something better. With something better than what we prayed for. And I can guarantee you that from my own experience, God never just says no and leaves you hanging. Nope. When God says no, he says yes in a bigger way, in a way you never expected, in a way you never even imagined, in a way that will just catch you by surprise and humble you even more. You know, it's so humbling an experience. Every time God responds to you, giving you better and bigger things than what you had actually prayed for. And I can tell you that from a thousand experience I have had praying and begging God for many things that I thought I needed, I thought uh, 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 our family uh, 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 needed or required for something. God always responded with a no. Many times God responded with a no because he had the better idea because he wanted to give us, me, something bigger. You see, that's our problem with our limited uh, intellect, with our limited aspirations, with our limited view of the world and even view of ourselves. We think that the things we want and ask for are already the biggest things to ask for and the biggest things to aspire for, right? And God puts us in our place by telling us, nah, no, come on. Is that all you want? Is that all you think is good for you? <laughs> I'm going to give you something better. Just wait for it. Just keep praying. Come on, keep praying. Come on, keep praying. Pray some more. I'm going to give you something better. Okay? That is why in the end, in the end, okay, Remember, God knows best. But there's another message I want you to understand here. In the end, when God says no to you, it's not the end of the story. Because in having to get you to pray more, guess what? Every prayer you say, every prayer you do, okay? God opens up the floodgates of His graces and fills your soul with so much grace. So much grace that is actually more than enough to satisfy your yearnings and your desires and your aspirations and, your, and, 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 and whatever it is you were asking for, even if, if it were not good for you or even if God had a different response, response to it, Every time you are praying for that, God is already filling your soul with so much graces that that, that of which you didn't even ask for. Right? God is already giving you a lot of grace. So you are already benefiting. The number one person to benefit from praying is us. You, you who are, who are praying. Even if you're praying for somebody else, even if you're praying for somebody else's intention, as we do a lot, even if you're praying for somebody else's good, somebody's health, somebody's recovery, somebody's whatever need, you know what? You, you, the person praying, are the one benefiting first by your having to involve yourself 
in a prayerful intention for somebody else. See? You are the first one benefiting because your act of piety, your act of devotion, your act of love, your act of faith, your act of trust in God by praying is in itself a magnet of grace for your own soul. And so you are the first one that benefits from all the praying that you do. Okay? So let's not forget that. Let's not forget. Pray, 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 and pray unceasingly. Pray without stopping. Because the first beneficiary of prayer is you. Okay? You are the first beneficiary of prayer. Whether you're praying for yourself or you're praying for others. The first one that benefits is you. Okay. That's it for us, folks, today. Have a good day, everybody. And we will say bye-bye, Eva Grace. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> say bye-bye, everybody. Bye -bye, bye -bye. Well, what about giving a kiss, everybody? A flying kiss? Give. Oh, where's the kiss? Where'd it go? Where's the flying kiss? <laughs> okay, I guess that's it. Huh? Okay, bye bye, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.